Well, I thank the gentleman from Missouri for recognizing me. Uh, it's only half of it, and what they are spending and wasting is in the wrong direction. We just want to talk a little bit uh, about the wrong direction Congress is going, and, and I hope they won't go further in the wrong direction as they continue to follow the President in the wrong direction. Now, I want to just remind you that uh, when the President was in my district campaigning, he made a pledge, uh, it's all over the Internet right now, <clears throat> that he would close the gap between the Space Shuttle Program and the Constellation Program. Initially, it was three years that we were going to outsource jobs to Russia to launch our, launch our astronauts. It was $30 million per astronaut for ours and all the international other astronauts that we promised to launch. Uh, the gap was three years. The gap grew to four years, five years, six years, looking at seven years now or maybe more. The cost um, the Russians are going to charge us now is $50 million per astronaut. And when we have no more shuttles and no alternative launch vehicle of our own, uh, Lord only knows what they're going to charge us. <clears throat> but back to the campaign promise. The President promised that he would close this gap. The time period between the shuttle's last flight and the first Constellation flight of the Ares, where we could launch men on the Ares. So in other words, let, let, for people that are not that familiar <clears throat> with the space program, what we're moving from is the old technology of the shuttle, which we see launched uh, in those beautiful pictures with the uh, hydrogen and oxygen central fuel on, the, on the, the main rocket engines and then the two solid boosters. So you see these two tanks on the sides of the aluminum and, and, uh, and I think it's ammonium chlorate or something. So you've got two solid motors and you've got the hydrogen oxygen in the center and those three take off. We're replacing that, right, with a new vehicle? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, uh, correct. And, and the, new, the new rocket uh, would allow us to go back to the moon. Uh, as, as well as back and forth to the International Space Station, as well as ultimately to Mars, uh, our manifest. So this destiny, is a more powerful will. system, <clears throat> uh, more powerful than the Saturn V back in Apollo days. Actually, carry more people. So <clears throat> the president promised that he would close this gap because, as the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Bishop, mentioned, uh, we will lose if we don't close that gap. Seven thousand of the best and brightest. Uh, space team members this country has ever seen, and <clears throat> he would ensure that we remain first in space. Now, space is the only thing the United States of America is universally, unequivocally, undeniably respected for around the globe. A lot of countries respect us for a few things, some respect us for nothing, some respect us for a lot of things, but the only thing that we're universally respected for, bar none, is our space program. We are first in space. And, and it's a matter of national security, and it's a matter of economic security. We know all wars aren't fought with bullets and bombs anymore. So the, the President made these two promises. Uh, they were witnessed in their own line. He also said, we need to lead in this global marketplace in high tech technology development. And <clears throat> we need to uh, encourage more children to go into math and science. We know now that we are only uh, training one-tenth the number of engineers that we need, and half of them are foreign students, so we expect to go back to their own countries. And we know China is graduating ten times more of these high-trained, highly specialized engineers than we are. That, that's not a good uh, end game, well, by but, the way. But let me, let me, yeah, I want to get you to your point. What you're saying is he made a promise that we're going to close this gap. Now, does the budget close the gap or not? Well, we'll get there. Um, the first thing that happened is he accepted the resignation of Michael Griffin, the, the inspirational genius behind the Constellation program and the Ares rocket. And for six months, when they were having the meetings, the NASA chair remained empty without an administrator. Everybody so, first of all, no administrator to replace him, which now, doesn't, doesn't look later, like something's on a fast track. Six months later, we got General Bolton. He's the new administrator, and he's a first-class guy, and he'll do a good job. Uh, but as soon as Bolton was named, uh, the president created a commission known as the Augustine Commission to tell us how we continue to explore space, uh, under current budget conditions. 
And the Augustine Commission met a number of times. They reported the Science and Technology Committee, and, and they basically said in their report, uh, you can't do that on the cheap. You just, you just can't do what needs to be done to keep America first in space, much less close that gap. You can't do it on the cheap. It's going to take about another $3 billion a year. Well, we were um, certainly looking forward to that extra money being put in the program. For as little as 1% of the failed stimulus plan spending, we could have flown that shuttle for five years and closed that gap. And uh, So 1% of the, the stimulus bill, which was, I think, about $800 billion or so, was it? Yeah, yeah. The one that didn't work. At least the rocket motor probably would have gone. This one, we lit it and it fizzled. Well, you know, the stimulus bill was all about supposedly employing people. Now, these are not low-wage jobs in the space industry. I think the average with benefits is about 80000 per, spread out all across this country. Uh, and no state is spared the benefit of space technology that's been developed. Uh, however, uh, while we are having people train to hold road signs that say stop and go to regulate traffic, we're getting rid of literally giving the pink slips to the brightest uh, and greatest scientific minds that we have. And, and I want to take you back to Apollo and tell you what's going to happen to those people. Uh, we had the best engineers in the world who were laid off in Apollo literally pump gas at gas stations until their homes were foreclosed and then they were forced to move on, never to return to the space program again. We had to completely rebuild the space program again, uh, as uh, Mr. Bishop very eloquently well, discussed just, a little while ago. I was just going to say that you're really, in a sense, making the same case that uh, Congressman Bishop just made. That is, you get some very, very highly trained people, you get the program all